A new day in Jordan. It may look like any other day in the Arab world, but it's not. These days, a not-so-quiet cultural and political evolution is taking place in the Middle East and North Africa. Over the past 10 years, women have been working hard to find their voice. They're making themselves heard and fighting for a seat at the political table right alongside men. Today, women are running for parliament, and they're winning. Six women made history in Jordan on June 17, 2003, when they were elected to parliament, making up just over 5% of the new lower house. These women, a dentist, three teachers, a pharmacist, and a lawyer, were elected from across the kingdom, from the north, south, east, and west. Women candidates earned over 33,000 votes, more than twice the votes women candidates received four years ago. And more women than men voted, another first for Jordan. The road to Parliament was no easy journey. When King Abdullah announced a national women's quota for the parliamentary elections last February, the National Democratic Institute for International Affairs, with support from the Middle East Partnership Initiative and the National Endowment for Democracy, conducted a series of training workshops for the 54 women running in the election, covering basic campaign skills, tactics, and strategies, from crafting campaign plans to phone banking, NDI, working with the local women's organizations, helped candidates hone and deliver their message to targeted voters in a variety of ways. Hello. NDI trainers offered ideas, encouragement, and support to candidates facing the stress and uncertainties of running in the first election under the quota. Give us self-confidence, actually. This training gave us self-confidence, and we were well-trained, and we were ready for this big fight. By actively participating in the political process, women leaders are working to loosen the tight grip on power traditionally concentrated in the hands of a few male leaders, ultimately strengthening democracy in their country. Running is a first step, not only for candidates, but also for younger women and girls who are watching and waiting. Uh, allocating seats for women in the parliament for the first time in the history of Jordan will encourage young women, really, to participate after four years as candidates. We make them aware of the fact that it's very important to have a new generation, to have new ideas, to have new blood in different uh, decision-making positions. In Morocco, women MPs watched the elections in Jordan with great interest. NDI conducted similar trainings for women candidates leading up to parliamentary elections in 2002. 35 women were elected to parliament that year, giving Morocco the highest percentage of women MPs in the Arab world. NDI's efforts encouraged male party leaders to recognize the value of including women at the leadership table. Many consider the Moroccan experience a model, one that is gaining acceptance and popularity throughout the Arab world. Moroccan women MPs know the obstacles women candidates face in convincing voters. They believe that by working together, women will not only prove themselves, but also move issues of common interest forward. We thought that having a large number of women MPs would make us more effective and enable us to address issues of national concern, women's issues in particular. Women MPs began to coordinate among ourselves, and we discovered that women can be very effective if we work together. A woman's perspective, voice, ideas, and insight are all traits women candidates hope to bring to Parliament. Convincing voters in a society with strong beliefs in the traditional roles for men and women can be difficult. Attitudes may be slow to change, but they are changing. I would vote for a woman. The men talked a lot, but we didn't get anything from them. So, women might be better. Uh, the woman represents half the society, and she should be given her freedom to express herself, to do what she wants, to be a partner, a real partner in this community and in life. For some, it was an uphill battle. Faiza Nuemi, Jordan's first Bedouin woman to run for parliament, was the ultimate rural candidate. Her campaign was not void of difficulty. I was met with a lot of opposition and many objections at the beginning, not from my people, but from others from outside. They were saying, like, uh, a woman, why would a woman run? It's as if there were no men left. 
and uh, similar things. But uh, luckily, eventually, mm, some of them uh, did get convinced and things did turn out for my best. For Faiza and many other candidates, support from her family, both financial and emotional, made the campaign possible. Family support, hard work and her community experience helped convince voters she was up to the task. Well, I've been working for 14 years in voluntary work. I've been a member of many, many voluntary associations and I've done a lot at this level. So people know me from a very long time and I expect that if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have been as successful in convincing people of me. For me, I feel an admiration for the women who have ran for the first time in Jordan. Uh, because uh, they have uh, uh, done a big step for their country. How many little girls uh, see her and see, oh yes, I would like to be like that one day. That is very important because uh, for the little girls, when they, they see uh, a woman running for election, they, they, it is an example for them. And how many uh, people have uh, voted for them, uh, trust in them, so even if uh, they have not uh, enough uh, voices to be elected, they didn't fail. They, they, they make their country do a big step in accepting women in the, in the political uh, life. Never say, I can't do this. Always try. You will never lose when you try. Try and you will see. If you are committed, if you believe in your women issues, please try your best. And you will see that men, when they see that you are very committed and you are very serious, they will help you. And uh, I do really thank NDI for what they have done here and the success of women in the upcoming parliament will be a, really a landmark in the uh, process of the women movement. They must know that uh, their country cannot go on without them. It is the country that needs them. We don't work only for the present, we work for the future.